I'm, uh, I'm Zach Franken. Thank you. Right, we're going to talk about uh, physical access control systems. I did a talk last year, and I, I have put together a very quick talk this year because we've been doing some, uh, some fun things. Uh, Major, who spoke before me, uh, has, uh, is, has been my bitch for the last six months, and it's been Code Monkey. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. But uh, Code Monkey's dead useful once you get them to stop masturbating and throwing shit at the walls. <laughs> okay, now. On Ivar. Okay, so. This was going to be an all-singing, all-dancing extravaganza, and then I realized, fuck, that's a lot of live demos. So we're going to do one super, super, super live demo, uh, which has great possibility for extreme messy disaster. You'll, you'll see what's going to happen in a minute. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, defeating a biometric system, uh, access control credentials in general, and uh, how to emulate a, a physical access control token. Okay, so in case you're not familiar with it, this is the, the basics of an access control system. Should I actually try and hold the mic or not? This is the question. Fuck it. Okay, so here we have a basic access control system. Uh, you have the access controller, uh, request to exit device, Normally a button or sometimes a passive infrared device mounted over the door. Not a good idea, by the way. Uh, an electric lock and a reader of some kind. Uh, typically, uh, proximity card readers, Wigand readers, mag stripes, or biometric readers these days. Now, this demo is going to take a little while to get going, so we're going to jump straight into it. So I'm going to talk about... Uh, hand geometry scanners. And uh, I have one here, which I picked up on eBay for uh, the stunning price of $2. <laughs> I love eBay. eBay is your friend. OK. However, when, I, when it arrived, it did appear to have been pried off the wall, so. <laughs> Slightly bent out of shape and required a little bit of muscling to get it back working. Touch wood, it's going to work now. So, this access control system knows about me. And the way these particular ones work is you enter, you either hold a, a card up to a reader or you enter a, a code on the keypad and it'll ask you to present your hand and you pop your hand, I don't know if you can see on the, uh, the screens here, uh, you pop your hand on this platen and there's, there's little pegs that help you line up your uh, fingers because one of the big issues with biometrics is uh, we're just big squidgy bags of mostly water and uh, in the digital age, yeah, we have alignment problems. So, and that's a big issue with most biometrics. So, there's normally something to help you line up uh, to kind of interface you with the digital world. So, in this case, you have a set of pegs. Uh, you have a, a set of little lights on the uh, reader. And when you close your hands up around the pegs, the light goes out, the lights go out. And when you get all of them out, it, uh, it takes a reading. And it's just an image. It's, uh, the base of the platen is highly reflective. And uh, there's a camera, or there's a set of mirrors. And there's a camera here, 45 degree mirror. And it takes an image of your hand on this uh, platen. This guy's quite nice because, and I, I swear to God, I be truly believe it was a hacker that thought this up. So you've got your camera taking your picture of your, uh, of your hand. And someone said, hmm, what happens if we put 
a mirror in there at 45 degrees, then we can take a slice across the hand, as long as it's in the field of vision of the camera, and uh, we suddenly get a 3D scanner. Uh, so we now have the uh, 3D scanner. As you can see here, here's an image. And uh, now I, we're going to try and uh, duplicate a credential for this. And uh, this is the credential. And it's going to be entertaining. Well, if it works. Can I borrow you for a second, please? Okay. No, don't, don't try and pull the wire. <laughs> okay, we'll use another one. Excellent. Can we have it up just a little bit? Okay. So, here is my template. One of the things with biometric systems is that, as well as security, they sell you on the fact that it's identifying you. You as a person. No one else will get in. That employee that you want access to your high security area, the great thing with biometric systems is it's only that person can get in. Well, we'll see if we can, we can duplicate me. So uh, this is less of a hack and, and more of a recipe, really. So we're going to start off. Uh, now, this is going to get a little bit mad because the stuff we're playing with here is going to go from uh, powder to liquid to solid in about 120 seconds flat. <laughs> and if you notice, we brought along his favorite stick, which is uh, ribbed for his pleasure. <laughs> okay, so we've got a bit of a recipe here. So first of all, Take four pounds of chromatic dental alginate and add it to a bucket. Uh, chromatic dental alginate is fantastic stuff. The first line in the instructions say, chromatic dental alginate has a pleasant dentist waiting room smell. <laughs> Notice I went for the, the one with the dentist waiting room smell. I didn't cheap out on you guys. I didn't get the... Uh, dentist waiting room smell available separately. <laughs> okay, and then, now this is, this is where it's gonna get absolutely fucking crazy. Not to put a finer point on it, mixing stick ready. Uh, do you want me to help pour? Okay. Stand by. Okay. Now this is the secret sauce. It's the mold. Okay, hold it. We're violet. I am happy with that. Do it. Okay. Yeah, right up. Keep going. Okay, this is where I've just, you just get me to stand very still for a couple of minutes. M major? Major? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, see that there? N no, that mousy thing. Flip it over. Uh, that one, yep. So, 
Uh, we start thoroughly, and we try to avoid bubbles. Keep going. And we added three pounds of meat to the mold. <laughs> so I'm going to let uh, Major beep. Clicky, clicky. <laughs> so we added the uh, dental alginate over the meat. And uh, now it's beginning to get hard. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. We will be offering a service afterwards if you want something molded. Okay, click. Click, click. Okay, so we're going to let it marinate for a couple of minutes. Now, yes, uh, I can't really do anything now. So, uh, yeah, don't even think about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, this credential, not supposed to be duplicatable. Uh, and if you think, God, I want to break into that telco, but uh, hey, how am I going to get the guy to uh, stand around with his hand in a bucket of alginate? Uh, the thing is, you're not. But you've got the other part of it, which is this is supposed to be unique to me. So I'm having dinner with the chief of police. Yeah, it's, uh, I, think we've, I think we've done it. I think it's as hard as it's going to get. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I have the compressed air, please? Thank you. Okay, now that was part one. A little bit of dry stuff came out, but we'll see. Okay, now, here's the key thing about this mold. We've got, we do have a couple of bubbles, but we'll see how it goes. Right. <coughs> now comes step two. Oh, yeah, step two. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some uh, vinyl polysiloxane, uh, also known as silicon rubber to you guys. This stuff is fabulous. Most silicon rubber takes 24 hours to cure. This is going to go from liquid to solid in 20 minutes, possibly sooner because it's a bit warm. <coughs> so, we're adding our... Uh, silicon base, and we're going to add our, the, uh, actually that was a catalyst, and now we're adding the base. And then he's going to stir it. Now, silicon tends to be a bit of a pain in the arse, uh, and you normally need a big vacuum chamber, and you need to vacuum it to get all the bubbles out of it to set. This stuff's pretty cool. You don't need to do that. And it has a resolution of two micrometers, right? Which is pretty fine. I don't know, actually. I, the question was, what's the, the resolution of the, the hand geometry scanner? And I don't know uh, off the top of my head. It is less rigorous. And then he's going to fall asleep. Bastard. Okay. Right. Whilst this is going on, are you almost stirred? Have you got all the white stuff off the bottom? Okay. So... In order to, to, again, to try and eliminate bubbles, uh, Major's going to pour this very carefully in a very thin stream into the deepest part of the mold. Uh, 
Go for it. Up a, a bit higher. Oh, yeah. Alien green. So, yeah, one of the problems with biometrics, you're not really supposed to be able to do this. And with a lot of biometrics, as, as we've probably seen and as I've spoken about before, not so great when it comes to this. I had a, a collision with my, uh, one of my neighbors. I have several of these hand geometry scanners. And uh, I was coming over here one summer and I, he was, he was going to look after the house. And uh, I'm like, okay, and just in case anything goes wrong with the power, you need to get into the plant room, so I need to register your hand with the hand geometry system. And that, was, that went okay. Uh, so I enrolled him. And I said, right, now you have a go. And I typed in a code on the, on the panel, or his code on the panel. And uh, I said, right, put your hand in there. And he did. And it opened the door. And he said, uh, yeah, you know, that wasn't my code. <laughs> uh, so I put in my code, and, I ma and he matched my... Uh, template uh, and that's not so good especially when it's your next door neighbor fortunately he's a nice guy but uh, okay so one of the key things here uh, so let's just say I've, I've tried this before and one of the key things to getting this right was the mold this molds quite particular it's got a series of rods. Uh, if you see it on the front, there's a, a scale picture of, actually, can we bump it, Major? Uh, we're just going to tap it to get, the, uh, to get any bubbles out. Harder. <laughs> OK. So. Uh, so the key thing here was making a cast of your hand isn't good enough. What you have to do is you have to get a cast of your hand and, and get it laid out exactly right. So on the front here, uh, there's a scale image of the platen of this hand geometry scanner. And drilled through the mold are holes and running through the, uh, the holes are, are pegs exactly in the, uh, the same dimension as the pegs on the platen. So when this comes out, hopefully, if I wasn't too distracted talking to you and I got my hand position right, is my hand should be in exactly the same position as the hand geometry scanner expects to see it in. So we're gonna leave that for 20 minutes. And uh, bloody hell, okay, we're running late. <clears throat> okay, prepare for uh, lightning talk. Okay, so we're going to leave that to cook for 20 minutes, and hopefully uh, we should be able to demold it, and it should get access through code 123 on here. Okay, now, the other problem with biometrics is how do you revoke your credential? <laughs> now, that's not so good and uh, when I come back into the UK these days I actually use uh, an iris scan system so I don't even bother with my passport I just walk in look into their poor user interface and uh, I get a picture taken of my irises this has slightly larger repercussions of course, being UK government, they'll no doubt provide me with a handy kit. <laughs> but uh, the real issue is, is, uh, is what happens when you have to revoke your other credential. <laughs> okay. So, while this is cooking, I or setting, we're going to have a, a, a little chat about uh, some other credential technologies. We're going to talk briefly about the, the MagStrike card. 
WIGAN cards, I'm not really going to cover, but I'm mentioning it, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. And uh, proximity cards. So, Mag Stripes, everyone's got one in your pocket. Uh, normally, they have about three tracks on the card. And there are two types based on the amount of energy it takes to flip the, uh, the bits on the card effectively. Most of the cards in your pocket will be high coercivity cards, apart from your hotel keys, uh, which are most likely to be local cards. And, uh, and you can zap them with cell phones quite easily, so uh, no surprises there. Some high security cards can simply mean just adjusting the, uh, the offsetting of the, the tracks and the cards. But there's some other quite cool technology. You didn't think mag strikes could be secure. And I haven't had a really close look at these other tech technologies, uh, a real good go at them, but hey, got to start somewhere. So they use, tend to use fingerprinting. So one of them is it'll take an image of the entire mic stripe and try and work out where there's particular magnetic hotspots that were just natural when the magnetic slurry was laid down. There's an actual magnetic imprint which they lay down when they put the slurry down, which is permanent on the card, and you can write data on and off the top of it. And what you tend to do is you tend to use that uh, imprint, the, the data from the imprint on the slurry, uh, as part of a checksum for the data on the card. <laughs> Some cards also use holograms on the actual mag stripe itself. Uh, and that's actually read with an optical reader. And some use IR coding as well on the stripe. So basically, you're not really aware of it's there, but there's an IR code on the stripe that's read optically and then compared with the data on the card. And also, people do jitter analysis. So basically, they, they look at the wobbly signal that was laid down on the card in the first place and use that as a checksum. So, uh, this is where uh, CodeMonkey comes into play. Uh, CodeMonkey has been writing code furiously for me, uh, which is quite nice, and I have been uh, building toys. So this is Jackson. And Jackson emulates a uh, standard uh, three-track backstripe card. Uh, there are three very tightly wound, very thin coils. Uh, and uh, we have a driver circuit at the bottom that effectively emulates the, the actual data that's read off when you swipe your card. It's easier than you think. Uh, this guy here, so one of the big challenges with this was actually making the uh, transducers and uh, this little guy here, complete Heath Robinson. What's, it, what's the American version of Heath Robinson? No, no, no. The, the guy that uh, makes all... Yes, Rube Goldberg. Uh, the, we have, in the UK, we've got a guy called Heath Robinson that, that makes shit like this, or draws shit like this, and you've got Rube Gold, Goldberg. So this... Uh, Ticking away, and over about 40 minutes, we'll, we'll wind one of these transducers. Uh, and it's actually allowed me to make several of them, uh, because if I had to do them by hand, it just, it just ain't going to happen. So you see the, uh, the wire being spilled onto the, uh, the former. OK, now, when you use access control systems with, with uh, MagStripe cards, there's two ways of doing it. It either reads the data on your card, such as the PAN, your account number, and hashes that into, kind of muscles it into YGAND format, or it directly writes YGAND, uh, a data format, onto one of the, the tracks. And this is it, 13 characters, 
uh, on the bit stream you've got uh, 10 leading zeros, 10 trailing zeros, and 13 characters giving you your site code and the, the card ID. Proximity cards. Now, actually, the, the actual circuitry involved in driving Jackson, uh, simply what happens, and Count Zero back in the uh, late 80s and 90s wrote pretty much the seminal work on mag stripes, or certainly the, uh, the mag stripes he had back in those days. And what actually happens a bit is uh, a phase transition, a north-south north flip in the, uh, the bit stream that's being laid down on the cards. So basically, you know, north, 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 south. At that point, that transition signals a bit. It's, uh, it's encoded uh, with, uh, is it F2F, Major? You missed your mag stripe? Sorry? F2F. Frequency twice frequency. And uh, Major did a talk uh, years ago, because he's quite old, <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he was doing a whole bunch of mag stripe stuff. And one of the things he was doing is he was replaying mag stripes through a computer sound card. Uh, and we took this just a bit further and actually built a complete digital t device to, uh, to do it. Now, I was going to have the board attached, but I decided to do the, uh, the whole Terminator 2 thing. Uh, it'd be a bit sad, but uh, hey, it came out quite well, so you can check it out later on in uh, close up. Okay, so now we're going to talk about proximity cards. Uh, this is something I've been uh, quite interested in in a while, and finally we uh, actually managed to get some uh, traction on it. Again, simpler than you think. Uh, standard proximity cards tend to be 125 kilohertz. Uh, contactless smart cards operate in the 1356 megahertz range. So the reader, uh, and I didn't actually bring one, uh, emits an RF field that uh, powers up the card. And then the card sends its data back uh, and the reader sends it back to the host system. There are active cards that will uh, tend to be vehicle transponders that can be read from, from a, a good distance away. And in general, when they're energized, they barf back a single bit stream. So when the field hits the card, the card goes bah! to the tune of 540 bits to get its 26 bits across. Uh, in general, lots of things like, for example, this system here, the hand geometry scanner, outputs 26 bits. It doesn't output anything more than that. Uh, so. 26 bits in the access control industry is very much seen as a standard. And manufacturers will, will sell you your own uh, site codes or formats if you want uh, 10 minutes. Thank you. Okay. We need to speed up here. So they'll sell you your own uh, proprietary formats, um, and that's just an extra layer of security. This is uh, what happens when you undress a proximity card. In this case, this card happened to be dipped in chloroform. Uh, you can do it uh, with uh, acetone, however, and uh, that's been going on a lot, certainly with the MyFair cards. Okay, so finding uh, concealed detectors is easy. This. Uh, is dead simple. It, it has three components. A simple coil, uh, 33 turns around a, a regular soda can, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and any red LED. Red because it tends to be uh, driven with a lower voltage. And uh, you can spot uh, lit up detectors even when they're concealed behind uh, walls. 
Okay, so we're going to move on to another proximity tag. In this case, it's a unique tag, and we'll discover it's not quite so unique. So in general, these tags contain an 8-bit ID, byte ID. As all proximity tags, uh, they barf back a, a single ID when they're energized. Oh, and just so you know, somewhere at DEF CON, uh, there is a long-range reader. And when you're within a couple of feet of this reader and you have a tag on you, it's going to, uh, it's going to read the tag out your pocket and it's uh, going to uh, take your photograph. So I'm trialing it this year. Next year, it just may well be on the wall of sheep. So you might want to think about your tinfoil wallets next year. <laughs> or at least having a a card that is slightly more secure than my ID is one, two, three, my ID is one, two, three, my ID is one, two, three. Okay, so this particular tag, the UK police decided that they were having so many problems with uh, grannies forgetting their uh, alarm codes, they were going to mandate uh, tags to disarm all burglar alarms that they were going to show up to. And that would, that's kind of a poor idea. I'm like, can I have a a code as well, and they're like, no. So uh, that's great. Where do you put your proximity tag, especially when it's uh, one that looks like uh, that? Oh, why? That looks like it's supposed to go on my key ring. So I walk out of the house, I drop my keys in front of my front door, and they can break in and turn my alarm off. Great, and you were supposed to be reducing crime, how? Okay, so. This is Chameleon, and this is a very early version. And Chameleon emulates unique tags, or this particular version does. And uh, if you walk up to my house, this will disarm my alarm. Not as unique as uh, the manufacturers like you to think. And a lot of these proximity t tags can be quite simple. So that was V1. It's not a clone, as when it was pointed out to some manufacturers, they said, oh, you can't clone my card. That's not, that's not in the same format, physical format, as my token. It's like, yeah. It just happens to uh, transmit exactly the same ID as the original tag. Multipass. <laughs> okay. This is... Uh, so that was version one. This is, this is version eight. And uh, this, is, uh, this is Chameleon Multipass. So what we have here is a, a bit, bit more powerful device. It can, uh, it can handle more complex uh, cards. It can handle multiple cards. And if, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this uh, little silver thing with the blue tip. Any ideas? Hands up, any ideas what that might be? Yeah, that's a Bluetooth chip. So if you pair with it, it says, hi, I'm Chameleon. What, uh, what tag would you like me to emulate today? And uh, as I said, we, Chameleon's a bit more sophisticated than uh, version eight, from the multipass is a bit more sophisticated because it can actually do tags of a major uh, security vendor that's, that's around all the place. Uh, I'm not going to mention their names. Uh, it, 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 it may have three letters in there. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't possibly say. Are we, are, we, are, we, are we there? Are you sure it's not going to be chewy on the offside and soft in the middle? <laughs> okay. We didn't work out where the hell we were going to put all this dental alginate. We're going to put it in that box. Okay. Right. Uh, Major is going to have a chunk fest. Uh, so, yeah, Chameleon Multipass. It's... So... Other people have attacked this vendor's prox cards previously. And uh, prox cards, now that's a very important thing because you should be able to pull it apart. Gently now. Head to paper shroud. 
I'm going to let Chip Monkey do some work now. <laughs> Don't squirt in his eye. He doesn't like that. It doesn't matter if you break the gunk because um, we only care about what's inside. Do you want some leverage? <laughs> We're not gay, okay? <laughs> We're British. <laughs> yeah, maybe I do want some leverage. Oh. Tasty too. Okay, so if you see, th this is how my hand would normally sit in this. Not bad. Let's. Uh, oh, it's a bit spooky on the inside, but who cares? Moment of truth. Okay, you're gonna have to hold hold this. It's a little bit damp. I should have brought some talcum powder. Okay, that was a not good deed. Do a real one. Was a good the one beep. beep is good. Damn it, I hate live demos. <laughs> well, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> okay. One beep. Now, if you guys want to quickly, uh, actually we're running out of time, so I'm not going to throw them into the audience for you to check out, but you can hit us up in the Q&A. Let me just finish chatting with you about Chameleon. Okay, so... Oh, was that... That's the new one. Excellent. Fantastic. Okay, so, uh, so now you can be sitting with your boss when your mate's robbing your company. Okay, now Chameleon, one of the key things about Chameleon is we're actually emulating real tags. Uh, and one of our kind of key breakthroughs recently is we're actually able to arbitrarily, so previously people have been able to record and replay, and now what we can do is arbitrarily select site codes and badge numbers. Uh, and that would be bad. There's a, gr there's a great little mode we, we created, which is called All the Ones. So you're a, a sysadmin. You've just had your new access control system. You've chosen your site code, and you've been given a block of cards. What card number is in your pocket? Card number one. So All the Ones, actually, rather than trying to brute force your card space, brute forces uh, the site code space, which is only 256, uh, 256 site codes. So the chances are you can be in, and you're going to be in with admin rights. OK, so uh, thank you. So uh, this is we moved away from the coil antenna and went for a, a nice little flat edged one, shiny, shiny. So I'm going to finish up. Thank you very much to uh, Major, uh, Code Monkey. <laughs> Uh, was, who's my beautiful assistant, also including Major. And uh, I'd like to thank Nick at Tomps, who, uh, who managed to give us some direction on the, uh, the super good silicon goop. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, 
biometric systems, not unique. Take it easy. I'm Zach Franken, and I'll see you in the Q&A room. Take care.